Hey Devin, here's that video I was telling you about. Uh, I had to restart it because I found that error I told you about with the uh, the fleet sync uh, status messages. Um, so of course you know this is power, and as you've already found, if you hold down the scan button while you power it on, it puts it in the firmware programming mode where it says program and then it has the transfer rate next to it. Um, once it gets there, if you want to look at the checksum number for the current firmware that's on the radio, you hit the monitor button once and it'll show that. And then if you hit it again, it'll go back to where it says program and then you can do your firmware upgrade at that time. Um, so I guess we'll start over on this side. Of course, this is volume up, volume down. You can hold the button in and it'll scroll the volume to get it where you need it. I have the monitor set up instead of being momentary where you have to hold it. I've got it set as a toggle. I figure that's a little bit more useful if you're driving. Um, if you, you know, you think you're trying to hear somebody talking and it's a real weak signal, you want to go to monitor and then hit it again to uh, go back to whatever your um, squelch settings are, which I, I never mess with. The, the ones that are in there seem to work well. And then, um, let me zoom in a little bit here. The A button is for the fleet sync functionality. So when you hit that button, the first thing it does is it pulls up the pool of radio names that are in the group. And I have these loaded in here just so you have something to look at. But I thought, you know, if later on down the road you get another one of these radios to use as a base, you know, you, you could have it for that one. And then um, you use the C and the D button to scroll through them. So I got a Mobile 1 set up in there, a Mobile 2, HT1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, you might not have that many. I just, I just put it in there. If you do end up getting more of them, you know, we can go in there and, um, you know, name them whatever you want to name them. And I can, I can show you how to do that with the programming software. Um, and then I've also got a group. It's all radios that are part of that fleet sync group. So if you select that and you have three other radios that are programmed in that group, you can talk to all three of them and all three of them will hear you. If you want to do a selective call, you just pick a particular radio. Like if you're on mobile one, but you want to, you want to talk directly to HT1 over fleet sync, do a selective call, you just dial up to where it says HT1 and then you just simply transmit with your mic. Um, likewise, if you want to do a status message instead of talking over RF, you pick, you know, whatever radio you want. Let's just say in this, in this instance you want to do all radios. And then if you hit the Fleet Sync A button again, this is where it shows you those pre-programmed messages I had in there. And these are just ones I put in there just, just so you would have an example to look at. You know, like this one is, where are you? Are you okay? Do you need help? Meet at rally point. Yes, no, okay, as responses. And so let's say you wanted to send out, are you okay? Or, or actually let's say, meet at rally point. So once you pull up that status message, you just key the mic for like a second and let off and it will send that message to all those radios in that fleet sync group. Likewise, if you wanted to only do that to one, you'd first pick specifically what radio you want it to go to instead of all radios, and then hit that button again to pull these status messages up, and then key the mic and it'll only go to that one radio. So that's pretty much how that works. Um, the B button is to include or disclude a particular channel from uh, the scan. So let's say you have a channel that's 
you're picking up some interference or some intermodulation on and you, you're, it keeps stopping your scan, you can just hit the B button and it takes that little upside down triangle away which denotes that it was removed from the scan and then to add it back you just hit the B button again and it, and it shows that icon to let you know that it's added back. I've got them all programmed in to be part of the scan by default you know so if you run into issues with you know any any channel in particular you can um, you know take it out of the rotation so to speak for the time being if you want to. The C button is the operator selectable tone and when you pull that up see how it says OST and tone off and you again you can use this with any channel on any of these channel groups obviously the North Georgia GMRS and the channel groups that I have for some of those uh, surrounding states they're already pre-programmed in with the correct PL tones but let's say you know you're talking on simplex with with some buddies and you know you're on channel seven let's say and you say hey let's let's pull up uh let's go to a put a pl tone of 141.3 or you know 88.5 or whatever you just pull up the ost with that c button and then instead of using these two buttons you actually use the channel up channel down button to, to pick which one you want so let's say you want 141.3 you go there and you can actually leave it there on that screen and just start talking and it'll be uh, have the PL tone on both the transmit and receive. So you could do that on the simplex channels or you could do it on the bank, uh, the group of channels that I have that are just like the generic GMRS repeater channels that have no tones. So if you're traveling, you know, let's say you're in um, you know Mississippi or Louisiana or something and you get on my GMRS and you're like oh there's a repeater like 10 miles from here let me see if I can hit it you can go to that generic GMRS repeater channel you know whatever frequency you need and then if you know what the PL tone is you can go to this OST and pull up the PL tone and then you can hit that repeater so it's just kind of a workaround for not being able to program this through the uh, through the faceplate and then you know when you're done you can just go back to where it's tone off and just hit that button again to go back to your original display. And then of course the D button is to scroll up through the channel groups. You know if you didn't want to use Fleet Sync you could probably use this for something else and make the C button group down and the D button group up. But there's not very many channel groups so you can just cycle through them with this and then once you get around to the beginning it makes that longer tone to let you know that you're back to the first channel group so um, again that first channel group is just the regular uh, GMRS simplex channels and note that um, channel 8 through 14 those are the interstitial FRS channels and you can you can receive on those channels but I have transmit disabled because you, they're only supposed to be a half a watt and obviously this radio won't go can't you can't program it for a half a watt so I don't have those um, set to transmit on those so it goes all the way up to 22 and I also have channel 20 is the national calling frequency and it's a uh, PL tone 141.3 like in case of emergency I have that in there too and the channel up and down does the same thing when you get around and go back to that first channel it makes that longer tone so if you're scrolling through you don't have to necessarily be looking at the display that audible cue will let you know you've gone back to the uh, channel 1 location and then the second group is all those GMRS simplex channels but they have the fleet sync enabled so you could use that A button and use that functionality if you had um, other radios that were programmed in that fleet sync group. Um, I do not have channels 8 through 14 in there just because I mean you can't transmit on them so what would be the, the point? I at least have them on the group with the simplex channel so that, that you could receive on it. Um, and then this is the third bank uh, or third group of channels is the generic um, GMRS repeaters channel. So this would transmit on 467.5500, 467.5500, 467.5500. 
575, 600, 625, 650, 675, 700, 725. So, like I was saying earlier, if you were traveling and you found a repeater you wanted to try to get into and it's not one I had programmed in one of those other groups and you know what, you know what the PL tone is, you can use the OST function, go in, dial up the tone you need and then you could get into the repeater that way. Uh, fourth group, of course, is uh, North Georgia GMRS. This has got all the latest changes. Uh, the ones that have been decommissioned have been taken out. Um, has blue the the corrected Blue Ridge and the new Bremen in there. I don't think it's active yet, or the Lula, but I have them in there. So once once they're up and running, they're already programmed. And this is a. Uh, some repeaters in Georgia that I found on mygmrs.com that are supposedly open, and I have the uh, the tones programmed in there. So there's you know quite a few. I have them by city name, you know. So if you're near those areas, you might be able to get into those. And I have these channel groups prefaced with the uh, the two digit uh, state abbreviation. So that's Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky. And that's all the groups I have in there for you. So that's pretty much it. And uh, likewise, I have, um, I think I made, Was it the McDonough? I made the McDonough repeater your priority. See how it has the P right there? So if you're doing a scan and it scans across, you know, the groups, any traffic that comes on the McDonough repeater is going to override that scan and stop. And um, you might notice if you're hearing traffic and it's not the McDonough repeater, it may sound like there's a momentary little skip in the transmission. That's because the radio is performing a look back constantly at that repeater at that channel to see if there's any traffic while it's doing the doing the scan or if the scan picks up a transmission on one of the other channels. Uh, so if you ever have that happen, that's why nothing uh, nothing to freak out about. So that's pretty much it, man. I hope you enjoy it. Later.